Number one is uh, put yourself in the best position to be looked at according to your skill, ability, and talent. So uh, the better grades you get, depending on what level offers you, the more money opportunity you will have. Uh, so understanding where you are in your graduation percentage or class graduation percentile. Are you in the top 15%? Are you in the top 10%? That's very important when it comes to schools and offers and the ability to possibly walk on and let the school pay for it. Um, I think that the understanding of your core GPA get puts you a leg up in just the if there are comparables, if there is a kid on the board that's just as good as you are, same size, same height, same speed, but you have all the other tangibles, not intangibles, you have the high core GPA, you got uh, your quality student, you're in a high percentile, um, you're not going to cost school any money. That That's leverage for you. That's an opportunity for you to get as much as you can. So I think it's important that the understanding of your off the field stuff and the steps to take in those off to off the field uh, mandatory elements you have to have. That's very important. So there are three mandatory elements for most athletes looking to compete at a college level. You have to have you got to know your core GPA in order to understand where you fit on any level, whether you'll be able to make it in the sliding scale or the standards of D2, where your testing is one, scoring your GPA is another, or how much money you can get based on academic scholarship as the levels go down, because some schools won't offer you any athletic money, but they'll pay for you to go to school and put you in that athletic situation. Uh, I think that, that part there, the core GPA, go find it out. Go to your counselor, find out where you are today, especially if you're a sophomore, junior, senior, go find out. The second part is your test. Take those tests early and often, ACT, SAT. Find out the grade that you need to make to give you the most opportunity to not just qualify, but see how high you can go in that money. Also, there are opportunities for some people to take those tests for free. But don't wait till your senior year to try to take a test and get a grade you think you need. And parents, if you are going to invest in this process, invest in the opportunity for tutors to teach you how to maximize your test scores. Super duper important. Uh, and then, have you registered for the uh, NCAA Eligibility Center? to make sure you can actually compete as a collegiate athlete. Uh, those things are important right after you find out whether or not you're talented enough to play college ball. Because if you're not talented enough to play, none of this matters. That's the one thing none of us want to ever talk about, but that's just the truth. The reason not everybody can play college ball because some of them just ain't good enough. It's just the way it is. So what is your goal in whatever you're going after and then go after that and increase the skill and the understanding and the concept and the knowledge of all the components that you need in order to maximize that opportunity. We go into these situations uh, with uh, blind faith in ability without a real comparable to the national standard. Okay, But then we get upset because that kid's on the ESPN 300 and you deed him up that Friday night. Nah, man, that's not how it works. Coaches don't recruit stats. They recruit potential. How can you help me? How can you help my team? Where do you fit in this situation? Are you fast enough to play against these other cats? Are your, your grades good enough? Are you going to be a liability? Where are you on my board? Do we need a quarterback? So if we take the uh, emotional element out of the understanding process, there are schools for kids who are able to play, to play. You have to find out where and how. In today's information age, I think it is a disservice to these youngsters to increase a dream without understanding how to navigate it or using words like being realistic about whether or not your child can compete on these levels. If you want realism, start getting real analytics, real information, real processes. 
hey, this is what we run. This is where we are. This is the grade we're in. This is what the coach said they were on this team. They're the fourth best player on our team, right? So don't get upset about he's not fast enough, not quick enough. The coach don't like him. No, let's go increase some skill. Let's see where we can invest some time, energy, possibly money, understanding, integrity, all of these other uh, uh, all of these other things that go with it. Put our time into that. Put our investments into that, and maximize that road. You know, because just to rely on the hopes of a talented person in that region is just a bad game plan, especially in today's world. So if you want to navigate the process, those are the first few steps you take. Okay, and then parents can sometimes have their kids be part of the process. When do you think they overstep in that process? And how can they avoid being a hindrance to their child's choice or um, desire to be where and what they want to be. I think that the number one thing that parents can do after the opportunity to work with so many athletes, to engage with so many parents, to help uh, more than 100 athletes, uh, and I say that with a lot of confidence and, and humility at the same time, to be able to assist in the process of seeing a kid earn another four-year opportunity to come peaked at the sport that they love or get a scholarship that otherwise they may not even have had a chance to go to that school to me is everything so the number one thing parents can do is not let their opinion of what should be trump the logic of what is don't let because you think your child is good enough trump the taking the steps as quickly and as accurately as possible to give them the best chance based on how good they actually are. Second thing is get accurate information, not high level biased opinion. Hey, he runs, hey, hey, he a 4-3 all day. Let's see it. Where's the laser? When did he run it? How old was he when he did it? How, he, he benches this. Let's see it. Let's get some real data so we know how to adjust, increase, decrease. Where are you in this process? Not where you think you are because you scored four touchdowns the night before. You went for 30 on a JVB. Like, really? Where are you according to the standards that are being looked for to get you the opportunity? So then the parent can actually take that opinion, match it with the logic, and see where the gaps are and start working to fill in the gaps. There's nothing worse than an amazing athlete that's a senior and you ask, well, has he taken the ACT or the SAT? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, well, thanks for it. Now we got to play catch up. Because great athletes, a lot of times, that process gets expedited for them. And I'm not always speaking on the, like, it's hard to assist a great athlete to get something they were already going to get. Because they're already getting assistance. They're already being pushed in those directions because they're an asset to those things. And they should be. I, don't, I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, but those middle of the road athletes are the ones that hold teams together, the ones that make the most sense, the ones that fill rosters, the ones that play intricate parts and intricate roles in a team's success. And all they want is the opportunity. So let's make sure we can help them get it.